Welcome back to RetroCAD. And today, version 2.18. As I've begun to explore the various incremental versions of AutoCAD 2, I've become more aware of what made each release special. Today's has something really special in it that I think has been one of the most interesting things I've found so far. Let's take a look. Let's begin our exploration of AutoCAD 2.18 here in the configuration menu. There's just a new feature I want to show you in here under the operating parameters, which is initial drawing setup. So this is where we would choose a prototype file for new drawings, as it says here. So this is a drawing where you could set up your layers, your units, other command settings and variables, along with perhaps a title block. So kind of a time saver over doing those things in each new drawing that you create. We're going to open up an existing drawing to work with some of our new commands in. The first command that we're going to take a look at is the blip mode. We've seen in the past in our earlier versions of AutoCAD that every time we did a command pick, it would create a graphical blip everywhere on the screen. So now there is finally a setting where we can turn this blip mode off. The next new command I want to look at is polylines. And polylines are a big deal to me. Uh, essentially, it is a multi-segment line where all of the segments behave as one entity. So if you go to move or copy or erase the object, it is all one object. The other big feature of a polyline is that it carries within it the area. So if we go list this polyline, we'll see all the different segments and vertexes listed out. And at the end, we'll see an area and a perimeter. So this is a big deal to me working in the facility management industry because most of my work has to do with identifying areas, measuring their square footage, and then tallying those up and displaying them on reports. So this command was really the, the first move in the direction of being able to do this kind of work. Now a sister command that came along with it here is pedit. And this is where you can choose a polyline and edit the properties of that polyline. So for example, we could edit the vertexes. And remember at this point, there were no grips or anything. So you would use this method for moving through the particular vertexes of the polyline and then moving them or perhaps inserting a new one or deleting them, which in this command is done with a straighten command. You'd say straighten and then have this sub prompt where you'd go next previous go and you'd next to another vertex and then hit go and it would straighten that segment of the polyline by removing the vertexes. The next thing you can do with a polyline here is change its width. So we could either pick or type a width, which can be used to create, you know, kind of graphical, different graphical appearances for a polyline. And many times I used polylines to either enhance a title block or to do kind of early desktop publishing approaches. So that is the pedit command. Now, you might have already noticed, if you're one of our eagle-eyed viewers, that one of the new things that we can do in this version of AutoCAD is highlight an object that we're going to, I got to pick right on it because we don't have a pick box yet, highlight an object so that we know which commands we're choosing and selecting to do a given command on. Now, a thing that goes hand in hand with that is the new ability to do multiple selections within the same command. So here we're doing a window, but it doesn't immediately put us into the, you know, the, the business part of the move command. It's allowing us to do more selecting. So we could go select another object, or we could even go do another window and build up a selection set, like more of a compound selection set to do an action with. Now, the thing that goes hand in hand with that is once I have selected some objects, and in this case, I'm moving. 
So I'm going to pick a base point of displacement. And now I have a rubber band line to show you know, the difference between where I began and where I want to go. But a new feature that we have in this version is the ability to type the word drag, which enables a drag mode. So kind of a ghost image that we can drag around to give us some kind of visual reference for the object that we are going to move or copy or do another command with. In conjunction with this, there was also a command called drag mode, which would turn on and off the ability to use this drag feature in and of itself. There were a couple of new on off commands like this within AutoCAD 218. And the next one I wanna show is limits. Limits can now be turned off. And if you remember in a previous video, we looked at how when you would draw outside of the limits, it would actually come up with an error message and say, hey, you can't do that. And it couldn't really be turned off. But here we can turn limits off, allowing us to draw in the virtually unlimited infinite space of AutoCAD. Uh, another one of these toggles that we looked at in the last video is Qtext. So when we turn Qtext on, and I'm just going to zoom up to an area where there's some text so you can see this more readily. With Qtext on, our text is now rendered as a rectangle. In the previous version, it was kind of an overscore, underscore, and sometimes it was hard to tell which line that overscore, underscore related to. But now with it rendered as a box, you can quickly move text around without having to fully regenerate the text itself. I used to use this on spec documents where we'd have like a D or E size sheet completely filled with text. And when you wanted to manipulate that, you would turn on the Q text so you could do it more quickly. You know, just kind of made things easier to work with. I'm going to turn it back off for the rest of this exploration. The next thing I want to touch on is the files menu. We looked at files before, but now there is a copy command in here. So you type in the name of your source file, you type in the name of the destination file, and a copy gets made. I think you understand how that works. Something else I want to talk about but not actually do is you can hit Control Q here to cause a print echo feature to be enabled. And what that would do is if you had a dot matrix printer nearby, you could have the contents of your command line echoed out to the printer. So if you were doing a status command, for example, or perhaps a list, the content of this screen here would automatically get sent out to the printer. I used it once or twice and I don't know, honestly, I didn't find it to be that valuable. So it's in there, but I'm not sure exactly what, what function it does. Now I'm going to draw a couple of lines quickly. And I'm also going to draw a couple of P lines. And that is so I can demonstrate to you a couple of other new features. Specifically, a change to the fillet command. And I'm going to set the radius to a small radius like this. Fillet will now work with a polyline. So when we pick a polyline, every angle in it gets the fillet applied to it. So that's pretty handy. Along with that is the same thing for the brand new chamfer command. We set our distances. I'm just going to set them to be the same. We pick a polyline and the entire polyline gets chamfers applied to it. And we can also, of course, use it with, I'm going to turn the snap off, individual lines here. And we'll just zoom up so we can get a better idea of what that looks like. Nice. Let's zoom back out because the next thing we're going to look at is an enhancement to the view command. And you're probably familiar with the view command. You can zoom up on an area and then define your current screen view as a saved view that can be recalled from the keyboard. But a new feature that was added here is a window view. So we give it a name, like let's just call this drawers. And then we can pick with a window 
and define the view that way. So now if we go into the view command and we restore a view and we re restore drawers, it views that area of the drawing. So loads that as a view. Again, like, like with the slide command that we looked at in the last video, I've used views in presentation situations, like created a script that would move through a series of views to automate showing a client something. All right, the next command we're gonna look at is the layer command, which has a brand new enhancement called freeze thaw. So here we can go in and freeze a layer or a series of layers. And I think this one's called arrows. And now it freezes that layer, making it invisible to the user. So some people have wondered like, what's the difference between freeze and thaw versus on and off? And I'll give you two answers to that. One is in this version of AutoCAD, when you do a freeze, it actually has to do a regen. So if we go into a layer and we thaw and we thaw out arrows, it does a full regen. Now, if we go into the layer command and we turn off the layer arrows, it accomplishes the same thing with a redraw. And you can see how much quicker that was. And now we're going to turn it on arrows and it almost immediately comes back. So freeze and on off, freeze thaw on off. They did similar things visually but different things in terms of the drawing database. Now, CAD and CAFM writer Melanie Stone wrote an interesting article about the, the more current way that freeze, thaw, off and on work. And I will link that article down in the description. The next thing I wanna to touch on is the shell command. I'm sure we're all familiar with the shell command, but it was brand new here. So we could go in and do a shell and this will either let us do one DOS command, or if we hit enter, it'll go fully out into DOS. Obviously, we're going to have a lot less memory than we would normally have in DOS, but we can get out there and do multiple commands in a row. Or here, we're just going to do, we already did shell, we're going to do one shelled command, which is we're going to edit a Lisp routine with Norton Editor. So this allows us to go out do some editing in a file, and then quit out and go back into AutoCAD without ever having to leave the program. I used this quite a bit when I was like writing and editing a Lisp routine. Speaking of that, Lisp, AutoLisp specifically, is probably the biggest new feature in AutoCAD 218. So we can actually load a Lisp routine and add functionality extending the capabilities of AutoCAD. So here in this case, I've created a Lisp routine called rec. It takes the, it asks the user to pick two points and then it parses those points out and draws a closed rectangle from those points. So that's really the great thing about Lisp is that you can extend the program to do things that you were gonna do in AutoCAD, but to do them either automatically like kind of a, an advanced version of scripting or by prompting the user for different values. And really, AutoLisp was the first step towards all of the other extensibility languages that have subsequently been added to AutoCAD. You know, kind of opened up the whole third-party plug-in market for AutoCAD. The last thing I want to touch on is going to require a new drawing. So I'm just going to go in and create a drawing, which I'll call 3D, because we're going to draw some 3D stuff. This was the very first step in AutoCAD becoming a true 3D program. And I'm just going to load up my rec list routine since I'm just so darn proud of it. And let's just draw some rectangles. You can see that my blip mode came back on because I didn't turn it off in my uh, prototype drawing. So let's just draw some rectangles here. And what we're going to do is use the change command. Now the change command didn't do very many things back at this time. So what I'm going to do is pick a few things. And of course you can see they're highlighting, which is very exciting. We're going to change the elevation 
leave it at zero, but we're gonna change the thickness, which we're gonna to set to, I don't know, four. And then we're gonna change these two objects, elevation zero, and the thickness is going to be eight. So although we did set these and we could probably just believe that they're set to these, we are human beings and we want to see things visually. So the way that we rotate this so we can see it from another angle is we use the V point command. And at this time, this was the only way to change your viewpoint. So now we're gonna put in some coordinates that we wanna view from, and here we are. We are now viewing from more of an isometric angle, looking down at our objects, which are closed polylines that have been extruded to a given thickness. Now I'm gonna use the hide command to hide the lines that are hidden in this view. And look at it goes in and it's calculating those hidden lines. And voila, we have created an AutoCAD 218 3D object. Um, another 3D object that we can do here is a solid. And I will just draw it as well as I can from this isometric viewpoint. And then we will use the change command upon it as we did before. We'll change its elevation, set it to zero, and we'll make its thickness six. The thing that you're gonna see differently when we hide this is that the solid actually has the top closed, where our other objects that we drew previously look like they're hollow on the top. There were no 3D faces yet. There were no solids yet. This was the only way that people could draw in 3D. And at the time, a lot of people called this 2.5D. So with that, I think we've kind of covered the new high points of AutoCAD 2.18. And with that, we are going to wrap up this video. Man, each version of AutoCAD brings so many new things to the table. And it's really great to be able to explore them with you like this. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. Please like, subscribe, and tell a friend about RetroCAD. As one point of order, in the last video, I talked about having three episodes dedicated to AutoCAD version two, but upon looking more closely, I can see that there's going to be four. There's AutoCAD 201, which we already did, 218, AutoCAD 2.5, and AutoCAD 2.62. I think each one of these are going to continue to be as interesting as this one was. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.